Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So I wanted to do this video in regards to um, various ways that you can, <clears throat> excuse me, master your emotions. So I don't think it's um, any secret that today we are living in a very reactive society. A lot of this has been bred through the overconsumption of things like social media, um, watching too much reality TV, just the movies in general. Um, if you st <clears throat> start to analyze you know, TV and shows and just things on YouTube that are very dramatic in general, you can tell that society has created itself to, to look like that in, in reality. So a lot of this is socially engineered where you see people in the past from decades ago kind of handle things, especially politically, a little more diplomatically rather than being a little more reactive. So a lot of what's happening today is this mirror of who we've become, um, this inner world, outer world. And I really think that the human mind <clears throat> with social media, I think it has partly destroyed us um, individually and on a societal level because I really don't think the human mind has the capability of absorbing all of this information in addition to absorbing all of these opinions. You are basically opening up like the can of worms. You're walking into a lion's den of people who have so many different perspectives and perceptions in life and when it doesn't meet your ideal, it can really start to flare you up. So, um, you know, in, form, in a video last week, I talked about how to tame the ego. So here are some ways that you can start to master your emotions. This is really, really important. You have to master your emotions at some point in life because we have been bred to be like adult children. So when you look at Hollywood and all these things... Uh, like the wedding crashers, you know, where you have a bunch of 30-year-old guys that move back to a frat to party their ass off. It's like, we're not adults. Adults grow up and they master their emotions. So to some degree, we are still acting like children in our adult age. And I know working with seniors, I've, you know, spoken with people who have been in their 70s and up, and they were just saying by the time they were 18, 19 years old, like, the boys grew up to be men and they took care of their shit and they looked very like clean and things like that. And, and it's like today it's like everyone's just so sloppy. And that is the deconstruction of our societal fabric, okay? So if you want to master your emotions, the first thing that you have to do is think before you speak. Some people are a little more impulsive or reactive than other people, but we definitely see this today um, I might have shared in another video, back in like 2012 or 13, I was arguing with people on LinkedIn about an exercise science research study that proved, or that stated that um, eating a vegetarian plant-based diet was healthier than not. And I've, I don't eat meat, so it's like, of course, eating more plants in general, even if you eat meat, eating more plants is healthier. And I got into this really long argument. I wasted like four hours of my work day just going back and forth and I stepped back and I analyzed this and I was like, this is such a waste of my time. And from there, I just stopped commenting on things because I'm like, we all grew up learning from different professors in the kinesiology world. So how is that person right and I'm wrong and vice versa? So thinking before you speak, you know, it's like sleeping on a decision or, you know, taking a little break before you respond to that email. <clears throat> Once you get your emotions calm, you'll be in a better frame of mind because you're no longer operating solely through the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight. So being impulsive is a form of a weakness on, on weak emotional intelligence. So the second step to mastering your emotions is by developing emotional intelligence. Um, I have some notes here. Emotional intelligence, according to Daniel Goleman, an American psychologist, um, contains five key components. So it's about self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. So emotional intelligence kind of ties along with my third point, which is having empathy that other people in life have different perceptions and perspectives than you. Um, emotional intelligence is key because... You have self-awareness on how, it's like understanding your trigger points, right? 
There are certain topics that most people can never talk about with friends and loved ones, which is like religion, abortion, and politics. Those are generally hot button topics and it gets people pissed off. Um, but understanding when you're aware of your emotions, like, you know, if somebody hurts your feelings, you're very aware of that and you understand how to process and regulate those emotions. In addition to having empathy by understanding that maybe that person just didn't know right. Um, to tie along with the third point that the third point is empathy, um, of people having different perspectives and perceptions of you, this is where, when you use your emotional intelligence, you can detach from your own ideology in life. You see this a lot in politics. <clears throat> Liberals and conservatives, I feel like, will never get along. That's why so many people are going the independent route or just choosing various social issues to support that might fall right or left. Because this ideology is an attachment. It's an attachment to your ego and it's an attachment to how you <clears throat> see the world and you want other people to live and to see the world how you do. Now, some of that sounds great because it can develop a utopia, but it also will make the world a very bland place if you only see things from one lens. So understanding that people have gone through various experiences and they may or may not support these certain type of issues and having that empathy to understand why these people are feeling this way, even if they don't agree with you, that will lead you to be able to agree to disagree and to just at least understand each other. I did a video on this like two years ago, I think in 2018, which I can link down below, which is like, you may not like have empathy, but you can at least understand. So you can at least understand why certain things, people feel certain way about certain things. The fourth step is actually processing your emotions. This is really difficult for men to do because men have been bred to, you know, man up, suck it up, and pull up your bootstraps and go. And we can't emasculate men, and we do need men to be strong. I think this is why men are also on the front lines of war because they can detach from their emotions very quickly and pull the trigger unlike women who are a little bit, you know, along those lines of like kindness and compassion. Um, but really processing your emotions, like if somebody died in your family and you're feeling really upset about it, it's not about sweeping the emotions under the rug. It's actually processing your emotions. Let yourself cry. Let yourself grieve. Um, let yourself seek therapy or counseling if you need it. That is part of having emotional intelligence because you are aware and you can actually self-regulate your emotions. People choose various tools to regulate their emotions in many ways. Some people just have to detach from the world and go on a hike by themselves, be in solitude, and then process their emotions that way. There's really no right or wrong way on how to process that emotion, but you at least allow yourself to feel um, you know, a lot of relationships have issues because love is a, is a main component. It's the glue of any romantic relationship. And a lot of people who have been traumatized or hurt in the past actually don't allow themselves to open up to love or to be loved, to get to receive love. And that is in part having healthy emotional intelligence to know that you're worthy of receiving that. Um, a lot of times people are operating in fear that they're going to get hurt because they're being vulnerable to open up. Um, you see this a lot with people who've been divorced. They're afraid. They're afraid to get hurt again. Um, but when you work on yourself, you eventually be able to find uh, the factors to open things up like that. All right. The fifth one is to get wise. You know, we are definitely moving away from God, and it doesn't matter if you're an energy healer or if you're a religious Christian or Jewish person. The reality of today is that we are moving into a very logical society, which you need logic, <clears throat> but we are moving away from God. I mean, you can see something like anarchists don't care about the divine, but when you get wise, that helps you develop better perceptions, perspectives, and emotional intelligence. There is a verse in the Bible that talks about, um, I think it actually was when Jesus was getting crucified. It said, uh, don't judge them for they not know what they don't know. Like people don't know what they don't know. So in some ways, um, in that time, like the Romans didn't 
know anything higher than themselves besides politics and money. <clears throat> they didn't know the love of God and things like that. So there actually are very wise verses from the Bible or very wise quotes from other um, spiritual religions like Buddhism. I think there's a little bit of healthy degrees of things that you can kind of cherry pick from everything. Um, but a, once you get a little wise, you tend to think before you speak and you, you know, you be a little bit more like Christ or like Buddha where you're, you become more Zen to process your emotions rather than just being like a reactive human being. Um, and the sixth and final one is to get moving or to get meditating. Uh, we definitely need to control our mindset and our emotions today. And, you know, the body and the mind is very much linked. It's like what comes first, the mind or the body. When you feel good about yourself mentally, you want to move. And when you move, generally you feel good about yourself because you're getting the release of those healthy hormones. So, it's the interconnection of the cycle, um, and it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg, the mind or the body. Some people it's the mind, other people it's the body. You know, meditation and motion is possible, like through running and biking and things like that. You get in that state of flow, and you feel really good about yourself and about life. It's why exercise can also be an addiction. <clears throat> um, so all of these things, these six factors, really play into um, how to develop uh, better emotional intelligence, but how to master your emotions. So it's not about sweeping things under the rug. It's not about running away from your emotions or constantly being in a victimhood mindset. It's being an adult and being mature enough to actually take care of these emotions. Now, the tools and the methods that you use will vary on everybody. Obviously, if you don't believe in God, you're not probably going to be reading spiritual quotes, but that stuff actually might help you gain different perspectives in life. So it might be good for you to move out of your echo chamber and read something that is completely kind of foreign to you or something that you actually don't believe in. So these are some thoughts that I have. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, and I really hope that this helps <clears throat> bring some light, uh, especially when you're looking at emotional intelligence, like your intellectual intelligence, you know, that'll help you be a good engineer, but... The emotional piece is how you manage other people and manage relationships in life. So thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. If you have any comments, please post them below or any ways that you've helped master your emotions. We can all learn from each other. Have a great one. Bye.